We start by hydrating the unflavored gelatin. One sachet of unflavored gelatin equals one tablespoon. Hydrate in a quarter cup of water. This is equal to four tablespoons. Unflavored gelatin is sprinkled like rain. And this is the best method, because it's when it is fully absorbed. No lumps will form. I'm going to add one more teaspoon to strengthen it. Because the glucose I'm using isn't dense enough, let it rest for 5 to 10 minutes. When the gelatin is fully hydrated and the grains have absorbed all the water, it will be in a solid state and strengthened. At that point, bring it to a bain-marie or microwave. The gelatin takes 15 seconds to dissolve. Add 2 tablespoons of glucose that I've measured in a greased spoon so that it does not stick. 2 tablespoons of glycerin and 1 tablespoon of shortening in a bain-marie. The heat that it receives helps to dissolve other ingredients in microwave. If necessary, you'll need to return it to the heat for 15 more seconds so it can mix well. These additional 15 seconds of heat help to fully melt shortening and glucose. The mixture should not be allowed to boil. It should not be overheated. If it gets too hot, we must lower the temperature slightly or wait for it to cool to room temperature. If the mixture gets too hot, it will require a lot of powdered sugar, which will unbalance the mixture. It will lose quality, elasticity, and dry out too much. Everything must be well dissolved and fully incorporated. To avoid lumps, from the beginning, gradually add the powdered sugar and mix well with each addition. We should always scrape down the sides of the bowl so we don't get crusts. And to ensure it's well mixed, unflavored gelatin is the ingredient that sets the mixture. Glucose gives it elasticity. Glycerin adds softness, as does shortening. Glycerin cannot be used much in humid climates. It makes the mixture weep. I honeyed makes it soft and doesn't dry properly. At this point, when it is already pulling together, and we can form a ball, it is transferred to the counter, and place in the center of powdered sugar wreath. We lightly grease your hands, and begin to incorporate the sugar. We do it in a folding motion, incorporating the sugar in the center of the dough. I want you to observe how quickly it falls. It still needs more sugar. You'll add a little more sugar to improve the consistency, but it's better to keep it slightly soft so that when it rests, it gains firmness and consistency. Then, when rolling it out, if needed, add a little more sugar. But it's better not to make it so hard while it's being prepared and before letting it rest. If we drop it here, after squeezing it in our hand for a few minutes, no longer relaxes and does not fall as much as the previous time. When we grab it, it holds its shape better and doesn't fall as much. But it's still soft. It should look like this because, as it rests, it strengthens. It firms up and becomes a bit harder. Cover it with plastic wrap. Let it rest, preferably until the next day, to make it easier to handle and work with. To make this fondant recipe, add between 300 and 350 grams of powdered sugar. It will have a final weight of around 618 grams.